Hi everyone, Matt Hetherington here and in my coaching video today the topic is placement and we're just going to look at some very basic principles of placement and particularly look at how you can tailor your practice drills to help you improve your placement in table tennis matches. Now placement is obviously a key aspect of table tennis and combinations of spin and depth and power and placement together are what help create a whole player and what will help you raise your level. So having good placement is particularly important. You can play with a lot of power, but if you play to the wrong places on the table, then that can be neutralized or countered quite quickly. So I think placement is really one of the key things that developing players need to focus on to really raise their level uh, and get to the next stage of their development. If we look at backhand placement, uh, there's a very typical blocking drill and especially working on your blocking placement is very important and a lot of it comes down to where your shoulders are pointing when you block the ball and blocking is a really good place to start when you begin working on improving your backhand placement and it's really important that you get very good consistency and accuracy. You have to be very precise when you're practicing placement. So with the backhand, you'll notice that the shoulders and this supporting arm are often pointing towards where you're aiming the ball. So when I'm playing down the line, my racket's up, my hand's forward, my shoulders are forward, my body weight's forward, and I'm playing down the line, and the direction of my stroke follows through towards where I'm going. Now at a basic level, uh, without the deception in your play, this is very common that you're directing your stroke towards where you're aiming. Now when I want to change the direction to cross court, first I need to move my feet around so that my shoulders are pointing now towards this corner. So I'm moving to enable myself to bring this hand around, bring this hip around, toes are pointing this way, body weight's now forward in this direction, and I play the same basic stroke, now finishing pointing here. Once you have a handle on that and you're getting quite precise and consistent, it's very easy to increase the acceleration and really start developing from the block upwards towards countering or loops with that backhand stroke. But the principles really remain the same, that the weight transfer goes in the direction of the ball, the shoulders and the body weight point towards where we're aiming, and a lot of the time this guiding hand can really help with getting the ball in the direction and making sure the stroke follows the path of the direction that we want the ball to go. Now with the forehand, it's more about where your body weight and your shoulders finish. So when we're playing cross court, we're pushing our body weight through the hip and into the ball and the follow through when we're playing a cross court comes across, our shoulders finish pointing where we're aiming. As long as we're playing linear strokes, not inside out or, or hook shots, uh, for the most part, our shoulders will finish directly where we're playing. And it's the same when we're playing down the line, the body weight pushes out of the hip and into the ball. And then our stroke guides and follows through with our shoulders finishing again in the direction that we're playing the ball. Now the challenge with the forehand and a reason why you need to practice these placements is can you maintain the same weight transfer, power, spin and quality in your shots when you change direction. A lot of players are very comfortable playing the forehand cross court, but there is a drop off in quality when they play that ball down the line. And because it's on a shorter part of the table and you need to build some more acceleration through your stroke and maybe snap through your shots a little bit more to create a bit more of a, a dip or an arc that brings the ball down faster, players struggle to get high quality shots down the line. So a good drill to start with is the ball just coming onto your forehand side and you play to three points on the table. So it's a much easier three point forehand than the footwork version. Um, and you're playing one ball cross, one ball to the middle, one ball down the line, 
and alternating between those points. Um, you can also set targets on the other side of the table. That's very good with younger developing players. Having targets really helps them focus on where they're aiming and work towards the precision. One of the things that you need to think about when you're really focusing on improving your placement is where you're hitting the ball when you're doing multi-ball drills. So a lot of the time when there's a lot of balls coming at you and you're doing multi-ball, players fail to focus on where they're actually hitting the ball. And a lot of the time they're just returning the ball as quick as they can. The balls are going all across the middle of the table, some are going wide, some are going across, there's a lot of quick reactions but when we're under pressure, we're not thinking about where we're hitting the ball. So it's very important sometimes when you're doing your drills to set specific placements. And you'll notice in some of the drills that I do, um, maybe where I'm playing short and then stepping around, I'll play that forehand loop as close to that forehand wide corner as I can get. <laughs> Also, when I'm doing the flip and forehand counter, I try and go down the line. So I'm always trying to focus myself on where I'm placing the ball. Of course, aside from the actual drills, and uh, playing topspin or opening loops, you also need to think about the placement of your serve receives and the placement of your serves. I did do one video on incremental service placement and how things can change when you move the serve placement by small increments. So if you haven't seen that, that's really useful for this topic. But overall, I just wanted to focus on some very basic tips for backhand and forehand placement and just go over a handful of drills or ideas about your drills that you might find useful. Um, so hopefully that's given you more to think about and given you something that you can add to create more depth in your training. I implore you when you're doing drills, really think about adding more elements, more variables, spin, speed, placement, control. And the more that you can squeeze into these drills, um, the more that you're gonna get out of them, as long as you're constantly evaluating. But I feel that placement is often overlooked quite a lot and it's a very important aspect of table tennis. So thank you guys for joining me again. I'll be back again with another video tomorrow and I think we have five more videos left in this block of 30 before I take a short break and figure out where to go next. But thank you for everyone who's been supporting me so far. If you haven't subscribed yet, you know how to do that and feel free to leave comments or contact me at mhtabletennis.gmail.com if you have any questions. Thanks again guys.